Hey everybody, John Van Dyke here for New Jersey Exposed. Today is October 4th, 2020. Happy National CB Radio today, 10-4. Let's see what time it is here in Jersey. Well, according to my clock, it says 3.50 p.m. And of course, that is Jersey time. Okay, so this story has to do with uh, one of my favorite towns that I'm always uh, browbeating, and that is Homedale Township Police. But it's not so much about Homedale Township Police, so I don't want them or anybody else thinking that I am targeting them. It more has to do with the enablers, the apologists, the ones that make excuses, the ones that think it's not okay to hold our police accountable. So anyway, Home Del Tadja Police the other day, uh, I believe this would have been on the 3rd, October 3rd, posted a message on their Facebook page. There it is. And it's another one of these alerts. That there's been a big problem with houses being broken into, cars being stolen, cars being vandalized in Homedale Township. For those of you who don't live in the area, Homedale is a very well-to-do town. I do not live in that town. I do not expect to live there anytime soon in that town because houses are six, seven, eight hundred thousand, a million dollars in that town. You've got to be making some money. So, they posted an alert here. It says, on Saturday morning, 10-3-2020 at 6.08 a.m., Homedale Police received a call from a resident in the area of Line Road and Lakeview Drive who was observing several subjects stealing a 2020 Land Rover Discovery from their driveway. Further investigation revealed that three black males, ooh, what a surprise. Now, let me just interject here for a second. Homedale is a very lily white town. It's also got an Asian population in there and some Indian population. They don't have much in the way of black people in there. So when a black person or people are rolling up, young males are rolling up in that town, it causes neighbors to become suspicious. Nothing to do with racial profile. It's just the makeup of the community. When you see somebody that's not ordinarily in your area, you tend to pay attention. Further investigation revealed that three black males exited a dark colored four door SUV and approached the victim's house. Upon discovering that the land rollover was locked, they gained access to the garage through an unsecured door. After rummaging through the garage, they entered the home through an unsecured door. They searched the kitchen and dining room area of the home and eventually located the keys to the land rover and an undisclosed amount of cash. While in the home, the suspects were confronted by the homeowner, at which time they stole the vehicle and fled towards Bethany Road. No one was injured in the encounter. The stolen vehicle was recovered in Newark. What a surprise. And is awaiting return to the owner. Anyone who may have witnessed this incident or any suspicious behavior, please contact Homedale Police. Now, they don't state whether this neighbor who was observing the suspicious males had actually called the police right away they don't say so here's where it all starts it's amazing i asked one two simple questions and it starts a firestorm i posted and where were your patrol units and what were they doing when this was all happening there it is right there well, the cop apologists, they couldn't waste any time to get in there and respond to me. Irene Kesselman, they can't be everywhere. I hear that one a lot, they can't be everywhere. Denise A. Winter, give them a break. They're out there risking their lives. Easy to say that from your armchair. Oh, by the way, I got three thumbs up I got a sad face, I got an angry face. So I responded, Irene Kesselman, no, they can't, especially when they are parked in the middle of Laurel Avenue, reading plates or driving up and down the road, meaning Laurel Avenue, harassing motorists doing revenue enforcement. I've done some videos, just scroll back, where they're parked in the middle of the road, are the yellow lines with their plate readers. 
they love Laurel Avenue. They'll spend an hour, two hours out there just harassing. They go between uh, the Parkway exit at 114, they go up and down between that and uh, Route 35. And they like to harass people coming off the Parkway, people getting out of work at Bell Labs. And let's see. Denise A. Winter, so I responded to her. For 100K a year, the residents deserve better. Time for a priority change. Irene Kesselman. I disagree. I think Homedale, well, let's see where else she's at in there. Oh, Irene, she says here, I disagree. I think Homedale PD is doing the best they can, and I, for one, appreciate. I see them patrolling all the time. However, they can't be everywhere at once. So I responded, Irene Kesselman, I'm not saying they are bad. There's nothing wrong with asking questions and holding public servants accountable. They work for the taxpayer. The issue of houses and cars being broken into and then asking the public for help has become a common occurrence. I used to work at Lowe's, and every night when I left, I would see them parked with lights off, watching cars go by. Every second spent watching cars go by is a second that could be spent patrolling in the neighborhood. And that is absolutely right. I used to work at Lowe's on Route 35 in Homedale. And in the morning, I'd go in there, and I actually got a video of it. it had an officer parked on the sidewalk, watching the traffic with his little plate reader, trying to generate some revenue in the morning. I would leave there at night time when I worked the evening hour. I would leave there around 9.30. And they would be parked with their lights off on Route 35 over by the Homedale Motor Lodge, waiting to do their revenue enforcement. And I think to myself, every time I see a cop car park doing revenue enforcement is the second that is lost to patrolling the neighborhood. That's right. Let me see what else we got here. Oh, so we have uh, Jojo Huey. Thousand dollars a year risking their lives protecting servant citizens. If that seems a lot of money for the job they have to do, why don't you become one? Well, first of all, I can't become one. I'm too old. If I could start over, I probably would go do one. They get paid pretty damn good. They get a pretty nice uh, pension. They get a pretty nice benefits package. Sure, why not? Spend bulk of the day riding around in a car. Every once in a while, you got to respond to a call. And just for the record, uh, Jojo, these cops that sign up for this job, they like that kind of crap, okay? So don't give me the guilt trip stuff. They like it. They're big guys. They like to get in. They like that predator being predators where they get to chase after something, tackle it. Get, in a, get rough housing with it, they like it. That's why they, that's one of the reasons they sign up. So I don't feel sorry for them. They're doing it because they like it and a few other reasons. So I had to respond to Jojo Huey. They do not protect. The job of the police is to enforce laws. They investigate, make arrests, gather evidence, assist the prosecution, stop with the cop again. There is nothing wrong with questioning our public servants who work for us and holding them accountable. Jojo Huey. I used to work for city government. Well, what a surprise. Another cog in the wheel. You should give it a try and see how irritating it is for someone to tell you they pay your salary. Well, that's too bad that you don't like your employer telling you, remind you who pays your salary. And for the record, I did work for a government. I worked for the Parks Department. I worked for the Department of Environmental Protection at a state park. I see how in public employees are. There is no ambition to do anything. They, generally speaking, are cogs in the wheel. They're just there. They punch the clock. They go home. And I'm going to tell you how why I conclude that, at least where I was at, I used to cut the grass. And I used to cut the grass real nice, make a nice straight line and everything. It looked real nice. In fact, people complimented on how the, how the fields looked. When the other guy who was a full-timer there, been there for several years, it looked like snakes went up and down. That They cut fast and the grass is sticking. It's like they don't care. They don't care because it's not a business. They, just, they get a check. There's no motivation to do anything good if if it's not who they are.
Me personally, I like to do a good job. I like my work to look good. Doesn't matter whether I work for a government agency or not, but yeah, I did work for the government. I worked for the state. I used to work for city government. You should see, blah, blah, blah. Uh, someone to tell you that they pay your salary. That doesn't make them your personal servant. No, but when I walk into a government office, I expect service and I expect to be treated accordingly. And I have dealt with government workers on occasions where things didn't go right. And I remember one time I went out to the courthouse. I had to get a uh, court document, something that involved me. And the lady waiting on me pretty much was blowing me off and telling me it's going to take a few days to get it. Well, lo and behold, the person that worked in the office that was in charge was somebody I knew. And that person came up to me and I explained to her what I wanted. She said, no problem, we'll get it for you. And I had it within a day. I think I, I, think I had it in a couple hours. So I understand what goes on. And I, in my own course of business, when I was, had my own business, I dealt with uh, Board of Eds and municipality governments. And there were some that were like, worked very hard. They were good people. And there was others, they were just punching that clock. Uh, Copaganda, how cute. They do protect, like I said. You find the lack of pay so invite, in, inviting for what they put up with and feel you should could or could do a better job, by all means get certified and be who you think they should be. The fake fo profile picture and name would have to change, though, because servants, there are someone nosing into your business. Well, first of all, my name is who I am. I don't put all my personal business on Facebook for obvious reasons. First, between the stalkers and the nut jobs and the government, I don't put all my personal business out there. So, sorry to disappoint you there, Jojo Huey. And they do not protect, they enforce laws. The protecting is a byproduct of the law, of the enforcement. If somebody is beating you up and the officer drives by and sees you getting beat up, that's a violation of law if you don't want to be beat up. So the officer will jump out of the car and he will do his thing and you will be protected because the officer has stopped you from being assaulted. As far as them risking their lives every day, we all risk our lives every day. Every time we get in a car and go down the road, we are risking our lives. Particularly now if you're white, you're risking your life going out in public because you got these loonies out there that seem to have an issue with white people. So I don't buy it, not around here anyway. Maybe in the city, it's a little bit different. I'm talking about around here. Now, with the present climate, where, you know, all these videos are out there about how the crap the cops are doing are perpetrating on people. Yeah, there's some nut jobs out there that want to want to even the score. And bad things are happening to cops that necessarily don't, don't deserve that. I don't think cops deserve to be shot, killed, or hurt, or anything. I don't believe anybody, unless you've done something so tremendously bad that you deserve to get... get. So, yeah... I'm not buying into it, uh, but it just seems, uh, let me see what else we got on here. Oh, Johnny Slots, he put on there uh, priority change. Well, priority change meaning that you should be out there patrolling and protecting the neighborhood. Not sitting on the side of the road, driving up and down Laurel Avenue, or parked in the middle of the road with the plate readers, harassing people and trying to generate revenue. And these cops are being exploited by the town governing body to go out and generate revenue because the town councils put into the budget a, a uh, anticipated court finds revenue line item. Homedale happened to be last year 2019 was $525,000. So where do you think all that money's coming from? It's coming from the cops. Yeah. So the priority change is they need to stop with the revenue enforcement. They need to start getting back and patrolling the neighborhood. Stop hanging out on the highways, looking for something to do. But they don't want to go around patrolling the neighborhoods because it's boring. 
After a while, it gets boring driving around in circles up and down road. They don't like that. They'd rather pull somebody over because they know if they pull somebody over, they can uh, get them out of the car and pretend they smelled alcohol or pretend they smelled pot. You know, they pull you over, you, you don't look right. You got your hat on sideways. Maybe you, you've got the, uh, the, the urban look or something. And it's, this is what they'd rather do because that generates arrests, which the cop gets an attaboy. It generates revenue for the town because they get fined. But these cop apologists out there, they just, I don't know, they live in a glass bubble. They, they, I, they fall for that cop again, and I've said it before, you, you got to give the cops credit on the cop again. I mean, they really have sold it lock, stock, and barrel, and there's so many people out there have taken it. But these people, I, I, I'm beginning to think that even if I show them a hundred videos or two thousand videos of cops disrespecting citizens. If I point it out and show them the statistic of how much millions of dollars that bad police cost taxpayers, they wouldn't believe it. They wouldn't believe it. So, okay, so let me know what you think about it. We have these enablers that think that you should not question what the police would do, think you should not ask them to justify their actions. You shouldn't do anything. You should just trust them because they're there to protect you, right? Protect you, serve you. Where will we be without you? I don't know. There's a lot of people in this country that are, are you know, this, it, it's, it's Lily Whites. You know, Lily, I've said Lily Whites. They live in fear and... Uh, they, they, this, they, their perception is that the police are there to protect them. And uh, maybe there are some police out there that generally want to go out there and want to protect people. But for the most part, they're just out there enforcing laws, doing what they're told to do, which is primarily generate revenue. All right, let me know what you think about that story. We'll post a link to the Facebook page. You go check it out. I screenshot some of the, uh, the stuff that I just talked about. I'll put it in the, uh, the video here. If you want to stop, you can look at it yourself. Till next time, people, it's John Van Dyke for New Jersey Expose. And one quick thing here, kind of crisp out here today in New Jersey. It's uh, upper 50s, lower 60s, sunshine for most of the day, but clouds are rolling in. I'm not so sure what's going to happen tomorrow, but uh, still nice out here, a little breezy. Till next time, people.